Welcome to the Live Sports of New Mexico show. Today is the show about the past, the present, and the future, how we should approach each area in our life because we do kind of look at the past, we look at the future, and also obviously we look at the present. Um, we're going to focus on that. And then also at the end, we have a very special guest. Uh, he's going to come on. Another guy in college that did play here um, in town in Albuquerque that's playing college football now uh, in Division One. So we're excited uh, for him to come on later on. Um, and I really want to kind of talk about today the past All right, the, for this segment. The past, because the biggest thing I think about the past is the biggest quote is, we can reflect on the past, but we can't live in it. Does that make sense? Like we, we have to, like we could like look back on the past and think about our mistakes and think about, you know, things that, you know, good memories. Sometimes it's good to laugh, you know, have good times about the past, but we cannot live in it. Um, I think a big thing about past is, is our rejections. I think a lot of people carry rejections into their present life. Um, you get rejected by a girl, you get rejected by a boy, you know, and you want to go on a date with them. You know, that kind of, it hurts you for the next time because it's like, well, I don't want to get that same feeling again being rejected uh, when I try to, you know, ask somebody else um, if they want to date me, stuff like that. Um, so I can reflect our future. Um, <clears throat> even with, um, for me personally, I, I never really had a hard time with rejections uh, because I've always tried to be on the best teams. And with that is going to come some, all right, you didn't make the cut. Uh, you know, especially playing AU basketball, I did want to play for the best teams possible and not, not necessarily play for them, but just to see if I can make it. Um, and so I, I really focused on, you know, what can I do? How, how good can I be? And if I get rejected, then it kind of is like fuel to the fire. It's like, oh, I couldn't make it, so I'm going to go um, and try harder and try harder to make that team. Um, I did it when I was a freshman in high school. You know, I didn't. I wanted to play varsity, obviously, with freshmen for freshmen. But the reality was, I needed some time um, to get bigger and, uh, and stronger, faster, stuff like that, to improve my game. Uh, but it did lead me to say, you know what, I'm going to try harder. And even my sophomore year, where I still I had to play JV. You know, it, it was a guard-heavy team for varsity. A lot of juniors and seniors wasn't going to find some playing time, so fueled the fire for me. To play, and I played for a really good high school. You know, for me personally, it was about. Um, about for me, it was about who who wants to win. You know, I want to be a part of a winning culture, not a part of a team's like, hey, hey, I promise you, I'll give you 20, 30 points a game. Um, you come here, be the star of the team. But if we're not winning, and then I, for me, it's just not fun. It's not fun scoring. You know, scoring that many points, whatever, being the star for at what cost? You know, the cost was losing. So, um, I really think we should we should really focus on these rejections. Not really hold on to them, but say, you know what? Let this be fuel to fire uh, for us in the future. Um, you even see some of the best. They they have newspaper clippings in their and when they're working out. They say how they're no good. They're not going to make it. Uh, you see this with uh, with superstars. I mean, even especially like Steph Curry right now, killing in the NBA Finals. Not a lot of people gave him a chance. There are other guards that said they were going to be better than Steph that we didn't, we don't really hear about anymore. But he used that as fuel. And I think a lot of us should do that. I mean, even like with LeBron coming out of high school, they said, no, he wasn't, he was going to live up to. Now we're talking about he's the greatest of all time. Um, I think we, we, we need to look at these things, not just to hold on to, oh, I guess I'm no good. People keep saying I'm no good. I'm not fast enough. I'll never make it. My, none, no one in my family has ever made it to college. All right, so I'm not going to go to college. All right, and that's not how we should li live about it, live and say, you know, in the past, you know, all these things that people say about us, we're just going to like, just accept it. Um, so I think re the biggest thing we need to focus on with rejections is that we just can't hold on to them. We, we should put ourselves in positions that we might get rejected. I think so. I've done even now as a coach. I've put my name in, in, you know, for varsity positions um, here in town. And for me, I just wanted to go through the experience. The experience of getting interviews, seeing what, you know, oh, I didn't think about that, I didn't think about this. And um, still transitioning from player to coach, I have to think about different things as a coach. And so now, it's a, like, well, for me, it's fuel to the fire because I want to be the best coach of all time. And so, and then I can look back at the stuff, it's like, hey, remember when you rejected me? Remember when you interviewed me and you didn't give me the position? Or remember the time where you didn't even offer me an interview? Um, you just say, no, we're not even gonna go with you. Stuff like that. So that's stuff I focus on. And I'm just like, you know what? It's not, I'm not gonna hold on to it. I'm not gonna be depressed about it. I'm just gonna go for it. You know, I'm gonna use it to motivate me. And also the other side of the coin, is sometimes the good things also can make you live in the past. 
maybe you had a good game, maybe you had a good moment, you know, whatever it was, and you live on it and you're still posting it and you're still thinking about like, man, that game when I had 30 points, that was so great. But since then you've struggled and struggled and struggled. Um, and you haven't done what you needed to do, but you're still holding on to that. I think even there's some people that even go through, you know, through college and they, they hold on to college because they were so good in college, but they weren't good in the pros. Same thing in high school. Some people hold on to high school so much and when they get to college, they're like, man, I remember the days when I was in high school, I was killing it. All right? It's a different ball game. I mean, in high school, you could average 20, 30 points a game, but then you come to, come to college and it's different. Um, I think, you know, there's guys on from the first guy to the 12th guy that are all league. They, they led their state in scoring. They have their jerseys retired. So you're coming into a different realm when it comes to college. And even the pros, it's even different there. Um, so I think sometimes we can't, we can't do that because then we don't grow from it. Um, when we hold on to these good things, we could we could say, you know what, that that was pretty cool. That was fun to have. You know, I have moments where I look back and like that was pretty cool. But I don't live in the playing days. I mean, I kind of stopped living in the playing days right when I got into coaching because I knew there was a new chapter in my life um, that I needed to focus on. I can live back and like, oh man, I remember I used to kill it in high school, kill you know, kill you know, in college and whatever. But that's not good for me to do in, certain, in terms of like, let me relive it. Let me just, you know, stay in the moment. Um, it's different. I think it really is different when you live in it instead of reflect on it. So um, I think it's really important. That. And also the last thing too is we had to forgive others. All right, when we're thinking about people, what the, people have done to us in the past, um, I think that really, it, it hurts us more than it hurts the person because they probably forgot about it. They probably forgot about something you did to them um, or they did to you and you're still thinking about it and it's still hurting you. Um, so I think we can't let that happen. So for me, I think we need to forgive others so God can forgive you because God is forgiving. Like he forgives us for everything. It's not, not like he, ha he chooses to. He actually does it when we ask for forgiveness. Uh, so when God forgives us, it, you know, if God could forgive us, then we should be able to forgive others, um, even whatever they've done to us. I mean, we could remember the pain, but don't let it hurt you. I know there's some people, you put, some of you guys have scars in your arms, your legs, or whatever. You have scars on your face. Um, it was painful for the, the, the time you got that scar, but say after a few days or a few weeks, months, years, you don't feel that pain anymore, right? So why should we do that emotionally? Why should we do that mentally where we're thinking, you know, I, I, I'm gonna hold on to this pain because I, I like to. I don't, think it's, I don't think it makes sense when we hold on to pain. Um, so I think we just need to focus on that. When we reflect on the past, let's really look at how it could help us in the present and maybe even the future. And that's what we're going to talk about next, to talk about how we should approach the future in our present lives today. So you're not going to want to miss that. And then also we have our guests come on the third segment. So we hope to see you back. Folks, there's no other way but to be all in. Either he's Lord of all or he is not Lord at all. And you can experience the real and authentic, true life change that only God can provide to humanity. See, when we truly encounter Jesus and purpose to know him and follow his teachings, hashtag life change will occur. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Hey, New Mexico, come check out the newly remodeled guest rooms at the new Wyndham Albuquerque Hotel and Conference Center, featuring 309 rooms, 30,000 square feet of meeting space. New Mexico's only indoor water park featuring the Wave Runner. 2,200 square foot fitness center with hydro massage chairs. Also enjoy breakfast at our new Monsanita Grill and watch your favorite team play at Altitude Sports Bar and Grill. It's all at Wyndham Albuquerque Hotel and Conference Center. Get into the game with Garden Swartz Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rawlings, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 Shut Helmet. It's all at Garden Swartz Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swartz Team Sales. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, 
green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenfriedatabq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provia Sports Network. Welcome back to the Live Sports of New Mexico show. Today is our show about the past, the present, and the future, and how we should look at um, each and every one. So now for this segment, we want to talk about the future, um, what we should do with the future. I think the, the biggest thing we should remember is we can always look towards the future, but we can't wait for it. Right, and I'm going to kind of explain what that kind of means, but um, we have to really see that we have a plan. We do, some, we do need a plan or have an idea of what we want to do with our lives. We can't just send the present like, oh, I'm just waiting for something to happen. And <clears throat> I think we need to go out and get it. So people, I think, in, in the workforce, people kind of wait, either wait for, for promotions to, uh, they wait for the promotions instead of going, you know, doing what they need to do to get a promotion. I think people are like, man, I've been here for five years. I should have a promotion. I should have a raise. But what have you done outside of your paycheck to show that? Um, I think that's always been my approach is really what have I done extra to show that I want to get paid more, I want a promotion, whatever the case may be. And that's the same thing with, the, with our sports life. Um, whether you're on C team and JV or varsity, it's like, well, I want to be on varsity, but what have you done differently? Have you only practiced from the time coach asked you to practice? Have you shown up right on time instead of 30 minutes an hour early or stayed 30 minutes an hour later? All right, have you done extra film study? Have you done you know, extra work outside of practice? Um, you have to really show that to coaches and not, not necessarily where they have to see you. Like you don't have to go to, you could go to a gym and no one sees you. But when it comes to the light, when it comes to practice time and game times, and it shows that, wow, that player has really improved, then that's when they start seeing you and they start saying, all right, this player needs to go up. So I think that's what we need to really look, think about with the future. It's like, man, we want to get to a certain point, but what are we willing to do in the present to get there? You know, you want to make varsity, you're a freshman right now, you're in summer, you're in summer basketball, football, whatever it is, you want to be at the highest level, what are you doing to show that, you're, that you can get there right now for the future? So I think that's what uh, we need to focus on because we, we can't get this sense of entitlement. Um, and I think entitlement does ruin your happiness because you'll never be satisfied. You always think that you, you should be on the team instead of like, no, I'm privileged to be on this team. Um, so I think really we're not truly satisfied when even when we get what we want, it's like, well, I think I deserve more and deserve more. Um, I think we need to earn more. We need to focus on earning more instead of saying, you know what, I have the right to this or I deserve this. Like, no, I need to go earn it. Um, I think J.J. Watt, he signed a big contract a few years ago. Um, and the first thing he did, he got up like at four in the morning, something crazy like that. And he went to the weight room. He said, now I got to start earning it. And I think that's a really good approach because sometimes we can see these athletes, they get these big contracts. And it's like, well, I already got the money guaranteed. Why should I even work hard? You know, but I think it's what it is. It's, it's these GMs, these, the, the front office are thinking, you know what? We value this much that we think you are worth this much. Now it's your job as the athlete to prove that, that you are worth that much. And I think that's really the approach that God wants us to take is like, you know what? Even though we are in a position, maybe we already have something guaranteed coming our way. And maybe we are getting paid a certain amount, no matter what we do at work, we need to focus on like, you know what, I'm gonna give my best. Um, and so like I said, entitlement will ruin your happiness because you can never be truly satisf satisfied. So the things of this earth are really not so satisfied. Maybe you get like a new car, new house, um, new whatever, and it might help you for a moment, it might be great for a moment, but then it's like, well, you want something, want something else. And the, the brain, even psychologists will tell you, the brain has unlimited wants. You know, you could give your wish list of what you want, and then it's like, well, do you want more? Well, of course you want more, and you always want more, but it's, all, it's, all, it's really kind of about what you need and what you're willing to work for. So yeah, you could all, always have wants. There's nothing wrong with having wants, but you have to work for those. You have to say in the future, I want to get to this point, 
but I need, to, I need to do something. I want to dunk by sophomore year. Well, do some jumping drills, I will get you there. I want to make varsity by sophomore year. Well, do what you need to do over the summer to get there. Um, so you got to think about these things. When you're thinking about the future, you can't just wait for it. You can't say, all right, where is it, when is it coming? I want it, but when is it coming? We have to really work for it. So I think a lot of people, what they do is they wait for the answer instead of taking action. Uh, I think in spirit, spiritually too, a great thing that Pastor Steve always talks about is that prayer without action is just talking. You know, we, we pray to God because we know He's, a, he's our source, he's, he, you know, he's our provider, um, but He does want us to do things. You know, God has wanted people to do things from the beginning of time. Even with the Bible, He has said, people, he, he inspired people by the Holy Spirit to write the Bible. He didn't do it Himself. He said, you know, I want you to write it. You know, even with buildings, it's not like God says, all right, I want this church to be here, this church to be here, and He just plops it down. No, He asks men and, and women to build it um, so we could have a place where people could go and learn about God. Um, same thing that we have to understand with our lives is that it's not just going to happen. God's just not going to like plop it down. He's not a, a genie. He's not someone we just make a wish to. Um, it's something we have to take action with. He's saying, oh, God, this is what I want. Guide me, lead me. What am I supposed to do in order to get it? So that's why I think we need, uh, we need to take that approach. So don't just say you want a state championship or even just a college scholarship. Do what it takes to get there. You know, we should all just live a life when we look back. You know, I know we're talking about the future, but, you know, you go, you, you fight for the future. And you, when you look back, I want you to be able to say, you know what? I may have fallen short in some areas because we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But we can always give all that we have. I think when, when regret set, settles in is when we didn't give it enough. Um, you know, I've talked about this before. When I ran the Spartan race up in Colorado, 13 mile, uh, about 26 obstacles. Um, never done anything like that before and never ran that long, whatever. And, you know, I was training for it, didn't know how to train for it. And I was kind of like really pacing myself because it was like my focus was, you know, to, just to finish. And, you know, after I was done, you know, I, I make sure I train. I, I was eating right. And after I trained, after I did everything, I was like, after I finished the race, like, man, I could have I could have done more. I could have gotten a better time. Um, I think I could have ran harder. Um, that's because I don't think I pushed myself um, to that limit. Um, and so I think that's what we need to do is we need to understand, like, you know what? I can do this. And I think remember two things. All right, two things happen when we give our best. One is that we need to make our best better. Sometimes when we fall short, we need to make our best better. And two, we accomplish something that we thought we couldn't. So when you give your best, it's either, all right, well, I failed at this, so now I, the way I need to make sure I don't fail again is I need to do different things and improve in certain areas. But also, what if we do accomplish them? Then we're like, wait a minute, I didn't know I can. And then you do. It's like when you run a race, it's like, oh, I got this time. Now it's like, well, I got to make sure I get that time or even make it better. And you didn't know you could do that. And so that's what I think we should focus on is that we have these two things to focus on um, when we give our best. One is we need to make our best better. And two, we accomplish something that we thought we couldn't. So as we stand the present, let our, let our past and our future motivate us. All right, for our third segment, we're going to bring on David Cormier, a former Volcano Vista state champion and also now playing for the Air Force Academy in Division I football. So very excited for him to come on and hope you guys stick around. We'll see you when we come back. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Terry Cosper Insurance Agency is a proud partner with ProView Networks and a proud supporter of New Mexico High School Athletics. Terry has been a local farmer's agent for over 20 years for auto, home, life, and business insurance. Just like high school sports are important, so are teen drivers. For more information, call Terry or one of his licensed staff members at 898-5556. Quotes are available for you. Folks, there's no other way but to be all in. Either he's Lord of all or he is not Lord at all. 
and you can experience the real and authentic, true life change that only God can provide to humanity. See, when we truly encounter Jesus and purpose to know Him and follow His teachings, hashtag life change will occur. All right, welcome back to the Live Sports of New Mexico show. This show we're talking about the past, the present, and the future, and how we should approach uh, each area. How should we look on the past, how we should look on the future, and, and what we should do uh, in the present. But for this segment, I'm um, bringing a very special guest. Uh, he was a former Volcano Vista football and basketball player, uh, also ran track as well, and uh, he's currently at the Air Force Academy uh, going into his sophomore season. Uh, David Cormier, glad to have you. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Appreciate you bringing me on. Of course, of course. So I, I like doing this as, as we've kind of gone through some college players. You know, they all kind of go through a different recruitment process. So I really want um, our guys to understand, our viewers, especially the student athletes, really talk about your recruitment process um, at, from, from high school and then how they are interested in you, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of go over what they did for you. Yeah, so it was actually a really, really long process. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't start getting recruited until – Probably sometime junior year, um, UNM and um, NMSU really started showing interest. Mm -hmm. And of course, UNM offered, I think it was during basketball season junior year. Mm -hmm. And then um, that's when I really started to notice, like I can pick up uh, other offers if right. I really try for it. So I started looking into other schools, um, started looking at what camps I wanted to go to. And then of course, the more camps that I went to, the more offers started rolling in. And I think Northern Illinois offered, NMSU offered, so I was sitting at like three right there. And this is around junior summer going into senior year. So it was interesting. It wasn't too stressful then. Um, you know, I didn't really want to stay in state. Um, right. I didn't really want to go to Northern Illinois either. Right. Um, nothing against them, you know, it just wasn't what I wanted at mm -hmm. the time. So that was kind of difficult just knowing, do I commit, do I not commit? What if they pull right. an offer? Right. Um, I mean, you never really know what can mm -hmm. happen. You know, I don't want to sit there and just be offerless because of the waiting. Mm -hmm. um, but after talking to a couple coaches that I knew, people around me, people who supported me, you know, I thought I'm going to wait it out. So as my senior season came on, um, I started talking to other schools. Um, Air Force offered me, Army, Navy, um, UNLV offered me. I was really excited about that one. Um, Bowling Green State, UMass. Um, yeah, and the Northwestern <laughs> offered me as well. Um, and then Fort Lewis wanted me to play basketball as well. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, so, you know, I started weighing, you know, what do I want? You know, what do I want in a school? What do right. I want after? Right. You know, where do I want to live? That's when all of it started becoming overwhelming. And then um, I started talking about visits. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to schedule visits, although I'm still going through basketball season at this point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a lot, right. to, a lot to really juggle. <laughs> yeah. And especially because, like, my family, they weren't really an uh, athletic family, you mm -hmm. know, no one was recruited out of it. So, you know, it was all new to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, I was just going through the process, you know, one step at a time. So it was, uh, I was learning each and every day just about it and stuff like that. So, you know, I finally narrowed it down to Air Force, uh, Northwestern and Navy, just because, you know, those were the three schools that I felt most confident in. Um, all the other schools are great, you know. Um, I appreciate what they what they offered for me, but you know, um, Northwestern would have been great. Uh, big football school, uh, big academics as well. But um, when I went to when I went on my visit to Air Force, you know, there was something different about it. Um, there's just being there. Um, Coach Calhoun is really what sealed the deal. Um, uh, and when I talk to him, you know, he's real genuine. He, uh, he calls my mom all the time. Um, the receivers coach calls my mom as well all the time, Coach Stubbs. He's always calling her, asking how she's doing, you know, just a real genuine love for the family, you know. It just makes it really feel like it's more than football. So, right. And this was while I was being recruited. He still does it now, but, you know, so I, I really appreciated that. So, you know, that's where I went with that. But it, by the end of it, you know, I was, real, I was tired of the recruiting process. Because right. yeah. I only took four visits to get five. And um, I didn't take them all, you know. I, I wanted to go to Northwestern, but 
I was just gassed by the end. I was like, you know what, I'm going to Air Force, you know, there's no point in me taking another one. And it, was, it became a lot, you know, um, a lot of pressure built up in the end, but I'm happy with the decision I made for sure. Yeah, and I can see it, it is tough, you know, kind of deciding, but I, you know, I think the best thing is it's really the fit. You know, yeah. what, what's fit best for your family, for yourself, um, where you're gonna grow, and not just in, in athletics, but academics and you yeah. know, as a person as well. So that, good stuff. Um, so you did. You're you're at Air Force for football, but you know, I, co I coached you in 2016, all right? And you had a really good basketball season in 2017. I remember, um, you know, going to church. We were like, you were thinking about quitting, and you know, mm -hmm. you didn't know if you wanted the senior season because you're more focused on football. And then I see you play mid-season, and you're like, you know what? We actually have. A, I think we have a chance. And. Um, I think every, I think not a lot of people believed it, but you guys, and right. it was really cool to see you guys um, in 2017. So kind of walk us through that um, as we show your highlights here from, from the championship game. Um, walk us through like that playoff situ that, that playoff situation, being the 12 seed, and then winning a championship. Yeah, well, going into the playoffs, you know. We were sitting at a 12 seed, right? But that wasn't what we were focused on, you know? Everyone, by that time, everyone on the team was bought in. Right. Um, we all had the same mindset, had the same goal, knew what we had to do to win, knew what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like we all were together as one. You know, we were all confident, no mm -hmm. matter what everyone else would say, you know, we're the ones who are playing on the court. So at the end of the day, it's, we gotta take care of what we gotta right. do. Everyone was on the same page, and I mean, any team's lethal when everyone's oh, yeah. on the focus on the same goal like that yeah. easily. Yeah. So um, yeah, when we came to that point in time, you know, going into it, our matchups we liked them all. Yeah. Um, focused on one game at a time, you know, did what we had to do each and every game, and you know, win one, look at the next. Okay, what do we have to do to beat them? And just one step in front of the other, you know. And I mean, you can show all the hard work that we did throughout yeah. the season, all the ups and downs. I mean, it all it all came together at the end. Yeah, I mean, you see it here. I think you see these guys, how energetic you were, how the energy you brought, um, and just those moments. I mean, you know, yet yeah, everyone loves the dunks, but I think when we saw right there, it was it was just the energy you brought. I mean, yeah. even throughout the game, you were you were in there and you were just you were locked in defensively, and I think your leadership. Um, has really brought that and so um, the last question before we let you go um, when I coached you I think you really focused on strength and conditioning as you got um, older and you started getting stronger and faster um, help our student athletes you know re really help them understand why it is so important for that because in all sports I think you do need to be stronger and do be conditioned really tell them like okay why is it more than just basketball or football why do you really need to focus and be disciplined in those areas well, I mean, strength and conditioning plays a big part just because you can't always rely on talent. Right. At the end of the day, you know, you're going to, at some point in time, whether it's high school, college, middle school, any of that, you're going to need um, something to put you over the top, right. something to make you different, you know. And conditioning, I mean, that's big mm -hmm. because once you start getting fatigued, you know, you start losing the little things, um, fundamental stuff mm -hmm. like that. So the more conditioned you are, you know, the longer you can outlast your opponent. Mm -hmm. But strength, that's a big part just because it helps your talent. It helps your athleticism, you know. The more athletic you are, the easier things come to you. The game starts slowing down, you know. And that's really what separates good people from great is mm -hmm. just because, you know, they're stronger, faster, mm -hmm. and they put in the work. It's not only just conditioning and strengthening your body, but your mind as well, mm -hmm. you know. The more right. you work out, the more you lift, the more you run, you know, you start conditioning your mind to push through those mental barriers. Mm -hmm. And like when throughout the season, you know, you have those mental barriers of a bad game, stuff like that, it's easier to break through them because it's the same thing in the weight room, you know, that right. weight that you can't get, you finally get it, you finally break through it. Same thing through the season, you know, lose a game, break through it keep right. going you know look forward so I think it's a lot bigger than um, just getting stronger you know it, it sets you apart mentally and physically from those who you're going up against I agree yeah good stuff thanks David I, I hope you guys really take it to heart um, what he talked about his recruitment process what he went through the through the season how he overcame stuff um, and how what strength and conditioning is really doing so you, thank you David for coming on appreciate it uh, that we caught me. you when you're, you're back home here yeah. uh, while you're in college and we, we hope you do well in the future. So again, thanks for coming Appreciate on. Appreciate it. All right, thanks for you guys tuning in. All right, we'll see you next week.